All right, guys, good morning. I'm going to be showing you how to configure dynamic NAT or a NAT pool on a router. So uh, the difference between NAT overload and dynamic NAT. So NAT overload converts multiple private IP addresses to one to the, to the outbound interface IP address of the router. That's what NAT overload does. Dynamic NAT converts private IP addresses to a pool of public IP addresses. So instead of just having one public IP address, we have many for the router to choose from. So let's get to configuring it. Let's go into the CLI. Enable, go into global configuration mode. And the first thing we need to do, just like with NAT overload, is we need to create an access list because NAT and the access list work together. So we're going to create an access list. We're going to make a standard access list, a named access list. IP access list standard. And then we're going to name it SACL. And then the permit command. So this permit command is the same one as, as NAT overload. We're going to allow our network to communicate. So we're going to go permit 192.168.1.0 and the wildcard mask is 0 .0 .0 0 0 0.0.0.255. All right, so we're all set there. Let's check our work. Do show access dash list. And there's our standard or named standard access list permitting our network. So let's exit out of that and go into global configuration mode. And the next command is IP NAT pool. And we're creating the pool right now. So IP NAT pool. And then this is the name of the pool. We're going to do NAT pool in all capital letters. And uh, the starting IP address is 192.168.1.6. And the ending IP address is 192.168.1.8. And, uh, and then we put the subnet mask in there. So net mask. 255.255.255.0. All right, so we created our pool. Next thing we need to do is the next command joins the last two commands together. So we'll do IP NAT inside source list. And then the source list, this is the name of the standard access list. So SACL in capital letters. And then we type pool. And then we type in the pool name, which is NAT pool in all capital letters. All right, so we're all set. So we established NAT. The next thing we need to do is we need to establish NAT on the interfaces. So we're going to go into each interface, interface gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 0, the inbound interface, and we're going to go IP NAT inside. We're doing inside because everything through this, everything past this interface is a private IP, and private IP network. It's a private network. It has private IP addresses. It has IP addresses that we own. So it's IP NAT inside. We're going to do outside for serial 010 because it's outside facing. It's outbound facing. Everything past this interface is public. Somebody else owns the IP address. So we're going to go interface serial 010, IP NAT outside. OK. So let's check our work. Let's make sure this thing worked, right? So PC0. And I'm going to have PC0 connect with this web server on the public IP on the public uh, and the external network. So we're going to go 223.1.1.4, this HTTP server's IP address. And we have access to it, so that's good. Um, so let's check one more thing. Let's go into router 0. And we're going to do a do show IP NAT translations. And you can see right here. Uh, our protocols TCP, the inside global address, that's our that's the public IP address. Inside local is the IP address of the PC and it got converted. So everything looks good. So that's how you convert dynamic that's how you configure dynamic pool.